We'll bring the select board to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda as presented? And if not, then we will turn it over to Dave. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'll try to uh, cut down the introduction since we really are working predominantly with the same folks. If there are any questions after I'm finished here, please ask. Um, uh, purpose of this meeting is to review and to solicit questions and comments regarding items on the Town of Johnson Annual Town Meeting Warning. Um, those items will be voted upon by Australian ballot on March the 2nd, 2021. Uh, I assume that everyone has those materials, if not, um, they're available online, the Town of Johnson website. Um, and the same material is available on the ballots, which were uh, mailed out to all the registered voters in Johnson. Uh, just a, a polling question is, is there anyone who is unsure about how to participate in this meeting in terms of the mechanics of uh, getting recognized? I didn't think there would be, and so I'm going to jump over that. Brian, is there anybody on the phone? Not seen any uh, dial in. No, I don't believe so. Okay, so I don't have to deal with that. Um, if somebody does dial in, Brian, let me know, and I'll go back and give the star nine, star six speech. Um, Sounds good. Uh, Brian is our ringmaster. He will uh, he will actually be muting all of the uh, microphones except mine and those of the select board members. Uh, if you want to be recognized, the famous blue hand, uh, you click on the blue hand, and uh, in order you will be recognized by Brian, uh, who will then direct that uh, your inquiry. Your, excuse me, your connection to me, I will recognize the person who Brian has directed to me and then that person can speak. Um, there will be a small delay between the time of recognition and the time that your mic is turned off for Brian to find the right uh, button to push. Um, 
uh, every time you are recognized to speak and you do so, uh, please identify yourself to the record uh, since uh, minutes of this meeting have to be kept and we need to know who said what. Uh, this is an informational meeting, it's not a town meeting. The articles we're going to discuss today cannot be amended or disposed of in this, uh, in this informational meeting. Uh, the, the fate of all of those articles uh, will be decided by the votes counted on, cast and counted on March the 2nd. I'm going to initially recognize the select board chair uh, so that he can uh, say, uh, give a brief rundown on the uh, what's in the budget, uh, I would preliminarily, I would suggest that uh, the folks who were not at the earlier informational meeting might seek recognition and just let Eric know whether they want him to make that presentation or if they'd like to waive that and just go on to discussing the article. So maybe we could do that right now. Uh, Eric, um, you were a little earlier, you said you had some questions, but you you didn't feel you needed a full introduction to the budget by uh, Eric, is that correct? I assume you're nodding. I don't, your mic isn't on, so. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yes, yes, I'm, I'm familiar with the budget. Okay. Uh, Would I ask Jan the same question, David, just to suggest? Yeah, we've got Jan and Diana also. So we'll go to yeah. Jan first. Jan, did you have any questions about the budget? Would you like an no. overview? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Diana, is she still with us? Yep. Um, I have no okay. specific budget questions and feel like I have a good understanding of that. So I'm happy okay. to move on. All right. So unless some new issues have come up since the last meeting uh, that uh, some other person who was on before would like to address with regard to the budget, uh, now is the time, absent any blue hands, we will move on to uh, the next articles. All right. Uh, there is a hand. There we go. Eric? I, I don't know if this is the right place to ask this question, but I, it's been something that I've been thinking about since I looked at the VT Digger article from a, last week that talked about how much each town in the state spent on their police budget, right? And I saw, you know, for, for the town of Johnson, we're at nearly a half million dollars. And as I looked around the state, you know, there were much bigger towns that spend less. And I, I kind of asked at the candidates forum if they knew what we get for that half million dollars that you know the town of Eden and doesn't feel that it needs, or that Cambridge feels they can spend a third as much on. Um, I, so you know, as we're looking at the amount for the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department in this budget, I, I'm kind of curious: um, what do we get without paying for a patrol budget, and what does that patrol budget get our town? I I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I probably yeah. turn. Go ahead, Nat. Hey, yeah. Hey, good questions, Eric. Um, those are interesting articles. Um, in Vermont Digger and, and worthy of uh, questioning. Um, are a bit of a just just to step back a bit where we are with the sheriff right now. Um, we um, have recognized that um, expenses are outstripping our ability to, to pay. <clears throat> um, and so we entered into a three-year informal agreement with the sheriff um, that is, would say for three years, we will limit budget increases to 3%. And while we do that in that process, um, simultaneously, we will form a committee of citizens to, to look at law enforcement issues um, in the community and specifically answer the question, um, specifically to study options for maintaining law, quality law enforcement coverage in a fin financially sustainable way. So that committee is underway um, now, well underway. 
um, it's led by Duncan. Oh, Diana is here too. She's doing a lot of great work on that committee as well. Um, so that's kind of where we are with the budget um, for the sheriff and, and how things are standing right now. To address the question, <laughs> there's, a, there's a real critical problem in those articles that they have not, not addressed specifically enough, which is that when you look at every town budget, they're showing you how much every town is spending, but they're not showing you what service the town is getting in return. So in Johnson, we're getting coverage. In Johnson, Wolcott, and Hyde Park, we're getting round the clock coverage 24 7, 365. Um, for patrol, we're getting uh, a police detective, um, which looks into um, uh, drug issues, also looks into, does an awful lot of work with sexual assaults, um, specifically against children. So, um, and maybe Diana can can talk well talk more about um, sort of what's in the, the sheriff's budget. But um, in Waterbury, they're contract they're not they don't have a department on their own. They don't contract with the sheriff. They contract with with they contract with the state police. And what they get is a fixed number of hours every week of patrol from the state police. Um, I believe it's capped at eighty hours per week in Waterbury. I'm not entirely sure if it's 40 or 80 hours. Um, and that's a maximum of 80 hours. In order for the state to fill those 80 hours, they have to have a state trooper who's willing um, to work overtime in order to fulfill that contract for Waterbury. Um, now the, the state police has an awful lot of vacancies on their own. So they're having a hard time filling the hours and the responsibilities they have, they're, they're giving. So now you've got these towns that are trying to contract with state police for even more services, but that's not necessarily, those hours aren't necessarily available. So the state and the legislature is really looking into whether they're even gonna continue doing that for the towns. Waterbury also has an advantage in that it's um, just a few miles down the interstate to Middlesex, which is big barracks. They've got a, an interstate that goes right through their, their town. Closest barracks to Johnson is um, an hour in any direction, um, almost an hour. So for us to contract with the state police, um, response times would still be, would I think be significantly higher. Um, for us to not have any um, contract at all, like Eden does, um, I mean, yeah, we just wouldn't, I mean, we would get uh, uh, state police as they, as totally on their whim, you know, how, how frequently or how often they're in town doing patrols, certainly wouldn't be around to um, do any of the extra work in terms of the uh, addressing the drug issues that we have or, or the sexual assaults or some of the other serious crime issues gone on for a while here. Oh, the other thing that when you look at those town by town comparisons, some towns when they put when they build their budget for the police department, they'll include things like vehicles and uh, buildings and overheads and salaries and benefits. Sometimes that's built into the police portion of the budget, but sometimes that's that's wrapped into the general budget for the town. So you know, you, you can be comparing a department here and a department here, but the budgets are structured so differently that it's really impossible to tell, well, when you built that, when you uh, replaced the roof on the sheriff's department last year, did you put it into the, um, into the building budget, building's budget or did you put it into the police budget? And those bigger articles don't address any of those issues at all. So you're really comparing apples and uh, Subarus at that point. Um, I went on for a while there, I hope, uh, <laughs> I, hope I answered your question. Okay. Did you want to respond to that or? Nope. You moved there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, uh, thanks. That was a really good answer. Like, I, you know, I really, I, I can't say I know a lot about this issue, but I, but I do, and I don't have any particular, you know, problem with the Moyle County Sheriff's. I think they do a great job, but, but, you know, we all 
probably read the police blotter and the sheriff's blotter and it doesn't strike me that our you know there there are issues in our town right there are some issues but i hear i read a lot of domestic disputes a lot of fender benders a lot of hit deer you know i'm not seeing that that we have you know you know a crime issue that requires patrols yes the state police and the one county sheriff's i believe will respond to calls if somebody has a problem without a town being contracted like if somebody in eden calls up the lamont county sheriff's they will get service if they have an issue but they don't get patrols and i i just I, i'm not personally you know I, I without exploring this issue a great deal and maybe somebody on the police committee knows more about this than i do i, I don't see us as needing a half a million dollars to prevent crime in the town of johnson it, it doesn't it doesn't strike me as a pervasive issue and we got a lot of issues that we have to deal with and and to me i, I feel very safe in this community um and so and, and i don't know and that's without without seeing a lot of sheriff's department but you know that clearly from what nat said there's a lot that i don't know i just think i'm glad that there's a committee i, I wasn't aware of this committee i don't know do they meet publicly do they have agendas that go out is i didn't see that on the list of committees in the town but um i'll check i'll double check thank you for your time thank you eric and they are on our list of committees they uh I, I Diana might remember, but they, they had two slightly different names. If you search for law enforcement on the town website, you'll find both of them. Uh, and that's your best bet until that's cleaned up once and for all. Um, but yeah, they accidentally ended up with two pages on our website that are named nearly the same thing. And it has caused a decent amount of confusion. Uh, Diana, is there anything, it, and there's uh, nothing there. Uh, Eric, I'll get with you uh, offline, Eric. Okay. It's if, if I can just answer that specific question. Sure. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, if you go to hydeparkvt.com slash sheriff, um, agendas and minutes are posted there. I'm disappointed they're not on our, on our website, but um, if you want to look at them right now, hopefully we can rectify that. But if you want to look at them, hydeparkvt.com slash share. Okay, I was uh, wondering if Diana had anything. To, you know, I'm not trying to call on you without your hand up, but is there anything that you can add to this conversation? Uh, thankfully, Diana does have her hand up. So go ahead, Diana. Yeah, uh, I think my hand's yellow, though. So if you're looking for a blue hand, that, that may be what's happening. Um, I was just gonna say the same thing that the, um, we are um, preparing agendas before each meeting and taking minutes at each meeting. And unfortunately those minutes aren't being posted on the Johnson website. Um, and it's nice to know that we have this alternate way to get to them because it's actually a collaborative committee between the towns of Johnson, Hyde Park and Wolcott. And so um, it's not just a Johnson um, effort at this point, because those are the three towns that um, contract with the sheriff's department for their coverage. And um, I think Ned did a fantastic job of summarizing months of work that we've done. That was a, a nice overview of kind of the way things stand now, but our final report will be um, very inclusive and, and thorough and answer that question completely. Um, and in the meanwhile, the minutes of our meetings to date should fill you in. I've just been informed those minutes are on our town website, but um, I, they're a little tough to get to. So, you know, we yeah. can work on that. Uh, we're, we're working on fixing that. Right now, like I said, there are two pages that are named almost the same thing and it's causing some confusion uh, and we have to fix that. But the law enforcement study committee has the minutes. The law enforcement review committee does not. Uh, we'll eliminate the law enforcement review committee and get it down to the law enforcement study committee and get that properly linked. Um, but yeah, we, we accidentally created, uh, it, it's not worth getting into, but uh, uh, myself and our webmaster accidentally created a duplicate and mislink them. So we're, we're fixing that. I think I saw Beth Sam. Okay, Beth. 
On the I was just going to say I could find the minutes, but I can't raise my hand for some reason. So, Brian, not for now, but maybe later you could look at settings. I'll check that out and I'll, I'll keep an eye on, on your portrait if you have to physically raise your hand. Okay, anyone else want to address anything in the budget, in the budget article? Uh, we do have a phone caller now, so this is a good time to review. If you're dialing in, um, you'll need to hit star, star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. Um, so if our phone caller has any questions about the budget or uh, uh, we have another individual joining us uh, uh, by, by computer. Um, yeah, just, just to clarify on the, on the phone, if you're on the phone and you want to be recognized, uh, hit star nine. And then after you have been recognized, you hit star six in order to uh, you unmute your, uh, your microphone. Okay, any other comments on article three, which is the budget uh, article? Seeing none. Brian, you see anything that I can't see? No, nope, I think we're all set. Okay, then let's go on to articles four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are the charitable entity uh, contribution articles. Uh, is there are any questions or comments with regard to those articles? Uh, I'll give a little update. We had, uh, let's see, Lamoille Home Health and Hospice, Clarina Howard Nichols Center, and the Red Cross. Uh, are asking for an increase, but they are nonprofit organizations that the town has been working with for a number of years. Uh, the North Central Vermont Recovery Center and Salvation Farms, uh, we've been working with those nonprofits, but this is the first year that they're asking for a uh, contribution from the town. Thank you. And Diana has a question. Um, basically just that I, I'm at work able to just tune in at the last minute and um, I don't have the rundown of the organizations in front of me and are there any others of note besides the ones you just mentioned? Uh, that's all of them. It's uh, I can throw those up on the screen. Give me a second here. Uh, Zoom in a little bit. Yes. It's four to eight. Uh, Lamoille Home Health and Hospice is, is asking for an increase. The Rena Howard Nichols Center is asking for an increase and the Red Cross is asking for an increase. Um, North Central Vermont Recovery Center, we've worked with on a couple projects uh, and they're a partner with Jenna's Promise. Um, and they have not been receiving any contribution from the town before now, but they're asking for that just to, to, to begin. Um, and same with Salvation Farms, they do some good work with our, um, with our food shelf and uh, they've, both organizations have partnered with us on the Working Communities Challenge, um, but this is the first year for either of them to ask for a donation from the town. And Diana, I'm not sure if your hand is still up or if it's at, up again. Okay. Any other questions or comments on those articles? Four, five, six, seven, eight. I can only see a part of the uh, assembled throng here, and I but I don't see any hands up. So unless I'm interrupted, uh, we'll move on. 
give them a second and remind if you're on the telephone, you'll want to dial star nine to raise your hand. Okay. I think I we're all set. That's you we're all set. Then let's move on to <clears throat> the ever popular Article Nine on tax collection and fees and interest and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> Ryan, it's my understanding that there's been no substantive change in uh, you know the provisions uh, that you'll find and will find in Article Nine. No, uh, th this is in order to collect uh, by uh, quarterly payments. We it has to be voted on. Uh, we have to be instructed by the voters in order to collect quarterly payments instead of one lump sum. And our town residents have always preferred to collect it as quarterly payments. Hence the article. Okay. Can you uh, knock down the uh, the warning? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any comments or questions with regard to Article 9? Seeing none, Brian, you don't have anything on the phone? I don't see anything. <clears throat> and we'll go to Articles 10 and 11, the cannabis uh, articles. Um, I guess uh, Jessica gave a pretty good summary on that last time around. And so even though her hand, <clears throat> I don't see her hand up, I'm going to ask her if she would uh, give a, a review of what she uh, presented at the beginning of uh, this discussion at the last meeting. I, I see her nodding, so I think she's willing. Yep, I think. Oh, I'm willing. She's um, so hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jessica Bickford. Um, I work for Healthy Lamoille Valley, and so we have been following um, Act 164 closely, which uh, pertains to legal uh, retail markets of cannabis. Um, Act 164 is only retail cannabis. It doesn't talk about growing, distributing, um, those sort of things. Um, and so um, Articles 10 and 11 relate specifically to that. Um, Article 10, um, within Act 164, it requires towns at a town meeting or a special meeting um, to have put it out to the voters. Uh, it is not something that like the select board couldn't make the decision um, to open up retail markets in Johnson. Um, so it's, it's only by a town-wide vote um, and a resident of Johnson brought it forward to, to put on the vote. Um, and so that's why it's here. Uh, we are one of the, actually, we are the only town at this time in the Lamoille Valley that has it on. Um, so basically, um, just so everyone knows the landscape, uh, in October, Act 164 was passed without the governor's signature. Um, and then, um, they, but it is in there that they need to put together a cannabis control board. Um, and that was supposed to be done in early or by they're supposed to start meeting uh, by the end of January and they have not yet convened or those people have not been named. So we anticipate um, that the Cannabis Control Board, which is a state level board, is about two months behind. Now that board is actually gonna be setting a lot of the actual day-to-day -day regulations for the retail cannabis markets. So towns that actually vote yes now are voting um, not knowing what the Cannabis Control Board is going to be put into place. It's also important to note that no uh, retail cannabis licenses, um, well, there's a small caveat here. Johnson would not have any cannabis retail licenses uh, that would go into effect before October 2022. So a no vote now doesn't close the door for potential cannabis markets. It just allows the time for the, if the town were to vote that way to explore it uh, and the impacts. Um, so it's, it's really kind of still very vague. It's changing regularly. Um, Act 164 has some pieces in it that uh, are very um, ambiguous. Uh, so there's some uh, new legislation that's being introduced, uh, I believe in the Senate, Senate side 
um, to kind of, you know, answer some of those questions. Um, so uh, it, it's kind of a, you know, it's, they're building the plane as they're flying it a little bit. Um, the Article 11 is related to integrated licenses. Um, currently, the way Act 164 reads, there are the possibility of five integrated licenses in the state, and those are only for current cannabis dispensaries, so the medical dispensaries. And Johnson does not have one of those, but the way the articles were submitted, uh, it was recommended, I believe, by the town's lawyer to go ahead and put both on, um, even though currently Johnson wouldn't qualify for an integrated license, but it would potentially, if later on, um, integrated licenses were opened up to a broader. And integrated licenses mean that it only pertains to the retail piece of that, but there's retail, you would be, you could grow it, test it, sell it, package it, distribute it. So there's like five or six pieces into that integrated license. But the, 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 what you're voting on would be for that particular business when it opens up that it would just be the retail portion to allow them to sell. Um, the other portions are, are actually licensed separately through the state and the town has no direct say in that as current law reads. So I know that's still a little unclear, but hopefully that, that helped to answer some questions. And I'll stay unmuted to answer any others if you want. That would be great. Thank you, Jessica. And I think Eric has questions. So do we know if the town select board is acting as the local commission, does is the town going to have the right to grant and withdraw or revoke these licenses at their own discretion? Or is that one of the unknowns which would give somebody pause on voting for this, right? Is, is that correct? It's not 100% known, but the indication is that we would not have that ability. The, the final rules have not been set yet, but uh, the indication is that that is going to be held by the state cannabis control board and not the local cannabis control board. Hey, Matt? Yeah, there are a lot of those sort of rules and questions that are just unknown at this point, um, which is personally why I'm asking people to vote no on this. The select board is taking no position. We can vote on this at next town meeting or at any other town meeting um, and opt in at a later date, but it's way too early to opt in at this point. Um, so that's my, my feeling about it. Let's, let's, get, let's know what the rules are before we opt in. Any other <clears throat> commentary? <clears throat> Excuse me, or questions? I'm not seeing any uh, for, I think we had a couple, we had at least one more person join us. Uh, reminder, if you've got comments or questions, uh, please raise your hand. It's under the participants tab. If you're on a computer or uh, dial star nine on the telephone. I'm not seeing anything. None. Okay, then let's move on to uh, the <clears throat> town village merger discussions. Uh, any question or comment on that article? I'm not seeing any raised hands. Um, uh, just a little reminder that the, the study that we had been asked to commission is in your town report. Uh, so you can read and see what the findings that we've had so far are. Do we have any questions about the merger and continuing discussions? Seeing, hearing none. Uh, uh, we do have one. Eric coming to our rescue with. Uh... I'm sorry, I just, I've been looking at this for such a long time and it, it seems 
like I know the study says, well, there's not really much to be gained by the merger, but it just seems bizarre to have these two. I and mean, we already, you know, as far as the, the town racial justice committee having to work in coordination with the village trustees. And there were questions in the select board meeting, uh, the candidates forum about like extending sewer service. It just, is there something I don't understand about why we haven't decided to do this a long time ago? That's, I would, I would ask that question. That's all. Sir? Yeah, just basically, uh, it has not been the will of the voters to merge until, and even now, only the question was asked uh, to have the town and village have a consultant look into the, the reasoning, whether it's a worthwhile adventure or not. Matt? I would add that there are services that are needed or at least provided for the more densely populated part of the community that aren't needed in, in the less populated places, such as sewer service, um, water service, and even the electric department doesn't serve all areas of the town. Um, and, and just running those three utilities alone to say nothing of sidewalks and um, lighting and, and all of that um, is takes a takes a board, you know, and, and to put that on the select board, um, you know, you, you actually need a whole other board of people to 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 maintain those services, especially in the regulatory environment that we're in. So. Anything further? Yep, I've got uh, Diana. Okay. Diana? I know I asked this at a select board meeting, but I guess I just wanted some clarification on how this vote differs substantially from the last vote to actually explore the study. And I guess the, the last one revo re revolved around actually getting a report done. What would be the outcome or action dependent on this vote? If we've already had the report done, what, like, how is this different this time around? Eric's hand is up. Yeah, uh, what the voters directed, both the uh, town select board and the village voters directed the trustees was to hire a consultant to look into the question of a merger and whether there were great benefits or, uh, or some major issues with doing a merger. Uh, we've complied with the wishes of the voters. We uh, hired a consultant and this is the consultant's report presented back to the voters, just like they asked. Uh, now the question is before the voters, after they review the uh, consultant's report, do they want us to continue the discussion? And this is on the town side uh, with the village on a merger discussion. Uh, if we went and had those, if the vote of the voters is uh, overwhelmingly you know, in favor of a merger discussion, we will, and the same vote is uh, overwhelmingly in favor of the, from the village side, then the select board and the trustees will enter into discussions on how this whole merger would be taking place, get all the details, and then we would come back to the voters for that final vote on and present how it would work, how we would merge and be all the details. This doesn't have any details of how we would merge. Can I express an opinion? Go ahead. Is the time yeah. to do it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm never short on those. Um, I think that um, I understand what Nat's saying about there being a lot of functions that happen at the village level. And so therefore making that board go away could potentially put a lot more work on the select board. But it seems to me like there's another model that could apply too which is the utilities that the village trustees are now running could actually become like town departments, in which case the town select board doesn't have to run them. There'd be a department head to run it. And that seems like a kind of a contemporary model that could be effective. Um, and I know it's highly different from what we've done in the past, 
but it's not undone other places where, you know, instead of having the village run an electric department that serves the town, which I know I don't live in the village, but I have village electric, you know, it just seems like it could neaten things up a lot. And I understand the economic benefits haven't necessarily been proven at this point, but there's a lot of other benefits that could come from it, even if it's not a straight dollar for dollar savings. That there's a there's you know efficiencies that could be gained. And I guess by voting in favor of, of this next step that would allow people involved in the situation to look at some of these other models of what could happen, right? Exactly. Uh, you know, a potential model would be similar to what Morrisville's done when they merged their town and, and they haven't officially merged as last I knew. Uh, there still is a village trustees, but the only role of the village trustees now is uh, managing the utilities. And in essence, they become the water and light commissioners. And that's a, a model that could be uh, done as we would, uh, all of those departments would get absorbed by the town, yes, but we would have some, you know, water and light commissioner type of people that would oversee mm -hmm. and run those things. Uh, but it, it would, event, similar to, well, I can't think of anything to be similar to, but uh, we do have library trustees, even though it's a, uh, owned by the town, the library trustees do run the library. It could be something like that. Yeah. Who knows? It'd be yeah. a decision that would have to be made by the village and the town. Mm -hmm. And I know there's no way you could put a dollar amount on it, but it seems like there's a lot of like um, collaboration, which fortunately has gone really smoothly. You know, I think our trustees and our select board have historically worked really, worked really well together, but it seems like a lot of every meeting probably consists of you know, each taking care of a little bit of overseeing the other one's business or making those collaborations happen, as well as money going from one to pay the other and then from that other to pay the first. And, you know, things like contracting with the fire department for something that's town-wide, seems like, you know, why not just have a town fire department? <clears throat> Doug? Yeah, my, my take on this is, is, is different. I think that the village has been defined for years by, thought of as being the electric department. That is the primary view of the most important asset of the village. And, the, and as an enterprise, um, there is serious question whether or not it's an economically viable unit. Um, they operate with a village water, sewer, village electric, and a general department. When, we've, when I ask questions of Gordy about uh, the viability uh, without the general department, uh, it wasn't phrased exactly like that at all, but they need the general department because they need to have a place for their people who are paid at, at the wages of linemen to do. So you have people on the street plowing the, at, at linemen's wages. Well, you know, the, the first question you could easily handle with the uh, question with, with uh, um, having departments. But the real question underlying all of this in the gorilla in the room is, is the electric department viable without being subsidized by other departments in other ways? You know, that is, uh, uh, I've had conversations with Vermont Electric Co-op and we have five linemen. Vermont Electric Co-op would have one lineman according to one of their board supervisors. Uh, I recognize that there is, uh, you know, what does the village do all the time? We get questions of whether or not uh, is this a village for, you know, the select board is asked about things that are the village. You know, people don't understand the distinction. There's confusion. We would certainly, you know, I'm leaving, so I don't get to, uh, the, the select board. So I, I won't have a, a par participant, but this is going to be, this is going to be a negative cash flow, uh, a lot of money flowing from one part of the town to another, and maybe fairly so, because the people in the village are 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 um, are, are town residents. But you also have the situation where um, you you don't necessarily you know this is a simple. I think it's a simplistic view of well, let's let's cut through it and make one thing. Uh, we do not you know. I would say my vote would be absolutely not 
to merge because unless you went to a unless you went to departments where we didn't we the select board didn't have to manage them because we just don't have enough time to do what we have to do the the trustees have said over and over they spend 95 90% of their time on utilities they are a utility company they are not a they are not a general you know they're not a community government you know, they should be a utility. Whether or not the electric department is at 950 people is actually serviceable and viable is a real question. And nobody and people that needs to be addressed. I can tell you that I believe that the village is uh, has a is supposed to be under a tariff, so it's supposed to be increasing the the voltage that it operates on. It hasn't spent the money on that. But it has it has been charging people for that. They spent the money on uh, as they probably needed to do with dealing with their uh, their hazardous waste and on the powerhouse site. But they haven't done what they said they were going to do years ago. So there's a real question about to be examined as to whether or not we would ever want to touch that electric department. Hey, I'm sorry to be. So, you know, I guess I, I, I hope not to have to say anything on that. <laughs> you are what you are. You said what you said. Yeah. We got I, knew, I knew that when I opened my mouth. Me too. So out with a bang, Doug. <laughs> Any other comment on the Down Village article? I'm not seeing any. Okay, then uh, I will move on. Okay. To, uh, 13 and 14, the uh, ATV ordinances and impact study articles. Any questions or discussion on those? All right, Eric. Thank you. So I, I think it was, was it last year's or the year before his town meeting when a representative of the ATV clubs came and made an appeal to have the, the town opened up for their vehicles, right? It was last year. Last year. Was it last year. And, and I, I, as I looked at these, these two articles and I was trying to figure out where I stood on this and how much, you know, I know there have been a lot of issues with people complaining about noise, litter, you know, nuisance to, to property owners based on the ATVs, like how much communication has there been with this club and their ability to, 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 to monitor ATVs? And I also heard something about law enforcement saying that they could not enforce any of these um, laws on the ATVs, which was something that I heard that concerned me. And I wonder if somebody in the, in the meeting here knows more about this and can, and can answer those questions for me. All right. And I'll turn it over to Nat, too. I see his hand went up. Uh, it, it, there is difficulty enforcing. Uh, Lamoille Sheriff's Department doesn't have a, you know, a fleet of ATVs uh, with their normal patrol cars. By the time they get to the scene, uh, an ATV, if they were, uh, you know, tearing up our highway or something like that, they're, they're long gone by the time the, uh, the patrol officer gets there. Or even if he uh, happened to be there and witness it, uh, if he tried to take chase, they immediately go off into a trail and are gone somewhere and, you, and probably not even identifiable because with a helmet on and what have you, it'd be pretty hard to identify someone. What the uh, ATV group does do, and it's something very similar to what the snowmobile clubs do, is they contract with uh, some sheriff's offices and have provided uh, ATVs or snowmobiles, and they're the ones that are given the authority to go out and enforce uh, the, the ordinances and laws. The, uh, I believe it was uh, Franklin County or somebody like that was assisting with this, especially probably because of the opening up of Newport, and that might be an opportunity to expand that. I, I think one of the problems that maybe we have, and, and it probably could be addressed if it was more of a regional uh, initiative, 
is making sure all of our ordinances in the area were the same so that uh, an officer would know how to enforce a, an ordinance in Johnson because it's the same as what it is in Hyde Park or Morrisville or Cambridge or what have you. So I think that would be probably helpful if, if we did have some uh, uh, uniform ordinances. And, uh, and as I understood from the VASA at one of the meetings, uh, there would be that potential of enforcement contracting with Franklin or whoever that other sheriff's office was. I think Nat had some more information. No, I think you hit the nail on the head, the, pretty much what I wanted to say. But I do think as we move forward with this discussion, um, in, in, in another county, the ATV club does contract with, give money, you know, contracts with the, the sheriff's department of that county to provide certain enforcement of their trails. Um, and I think as we move forward with the, con with the discussion in Johnson, that would be perhaps a really um, a good part of a good part of the discussion, maybe a, 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 a way um, for, for parties to kind of come together to say, okay, we will allow you certain access in this area if you provide um, enforcement, uh, co enforcement contract, that sort of thing. I think that could be a, a positive negotiation. Any other comments? I think Eric right. News had his hand up also. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go to Eric. Doug's hand at one chance. We'll come back. Okay. Um, just a little background. Uh, about six years ago, I believe it was, when I was still on the Conservation Commission, we had problems up uh, in the Gomo uh, town forest with uh, um, ATVs that had eaten the old road up pretty bad and we're starting to do a parallel road, which was also eroding really badly. And through the uh, select board, uh, we had a conversation with Vasa and uh, essentially he told them they needed to get that road fixed back up again. And if they didn't keep their riders on the road, uh, that that section would get closed. And they took that to heart and sunk a lot of money into the, into the road. And uh, ever since, it's really been quite good. Now, that's a different issue than a lot of folks are talking about. But uh, so I think they do try, the organized guys, to uh, keep uh, road riders under control. On enforcement, having been a former game warden, uh, and, uh, but I was mainly in the field before there was very many ATVs. The problem uh, that Eric laid out is exactly right. When you try to respond to complaints with ATVs, you're way behind the, the ball and it's gonna be very difficult. So what you really need is proactive enforcement, which is essentially uh, uh, what Nat Nate was talking about, where you need officers out there on the ground, uh, you know, patrolling <laughs> essentially. And that would, uh, that could be very helpful. Uh, it also seems like there would be some uh, technological ways uh, with all the game camera technology and speed measuring uh, radar and stuff like that. You could probably have some uh, enforcement if the, if the ATV guys wanted to pay for it that would, would help with some of the other issues too without an officer having to sit right there. The other big issue that I, I've been reading about on Front Porch Forum is the noise. And it's not just only from individual machines, but it's when you get 15 or 10 or 15, 20 together, and they certainly can make quite a roar going by. Uh, but that seems like there's a legislative fix for that. Uh, I'm sure there could be, uh, you know, regulation or law passed by the Vermont legislature on how loud these machines are allowed to be. Uh, and several other issues could probably be cured that way too, but that, that's beyond the scope of the town for sure, but that's something maybe the ATV guys could say, yeah, we're hearing about it a lot of places. It's cutting into where we can we can ride our machines. We really ought to curb that. Because there certainly is the technology to make those machines a lot quieter. A good example is the snow machines. They're almost so quiet now that when you're on the trail, you don't even hear them coming behind you when you're skiing or walking. Uh, so we need a little bit of noise, <laughs> but uh, so I think there is some solutions down the road, but we're not quite at it yet. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. 
Doug, are you still? Yeah, um, the noise issue is is a serious problem, and it's uh, it's not at the town level. You know, it's at the legislative level, state. And I don't know if we have, I don't know if we're like California, where our rules might might affect uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, but but it it's it it can be addressed clearly. Um, I think the select board should take a a, a, a trip down Cotting Hollow, where uh, um, Eric had said that they the our local club has put tremendous effort. They really have um, put a lot of effort into that. I I see Ken Taranjo and others of his club up there. I see them in other areas. Uh, I know that they're trying to post areas. Uh, uh, nevertheless, I think a, a good look, you know, the greatest difficulty, well, I think we'll have the greatest difficulty in the village uh, later. And when trails get connected to Morrisville and, and, and there are longer trail rides to go going through. Where did you go? Pardon? I, I think we're just getting back. Miranda. Go ahead, Doug. All right. When 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 the, when there's an expansion of the trail system, there'll be uh, to other towns. Uh, th this uh, problem will maybe the noise will go down, uh, but but uh, th this there's going to be future problems with this with an expansion. But I think that uh, you know even though they've put a lot of effort and thousands of dollars of money into Cotting Hollow road it's quite vulnerable and i think you have to assess the present usage increase of it and determine whether or not uh, that area uh, which is absolutely vital to to atv it'd be wonderful if it was absolutely if it was uh you know armored you know and 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 truly you know iron plated and, and they could use it out without any worry of harm. I think you have to predict, you have to look and say, where are we and what's going to happen to this in, in the future with the increase? I know I'm talking to people who lived up on there and they're, uh, they're getting uh, at their being a mile. I'm the last house on the uh, third class road of Cotting Hollow. There are people probably a mile beyond me. They're buying chloride in the summer, getting chloride in order to keep the dust down around their house from ATVs. Uh, and if you, I went through the Cotting Hollow, and if you if you take a look at it, you'll see it's down to the ledge in a lot of places, and you'll be it'll be quite interesting. Uh, you know what is acceptable to the town in terms of that resource. And bear in mind that it's really, really the important piece. It'd be wonderful if the ATVers could use it, but you're going to have to make a decision. It'll be a tough decision. Further commentary or questions? Seeing. I, I do have Eric. Thanks. So, I mean, if there's a real noise issue, yeah, there's a legislative fix, but also we could just, re you can just repeal the ordinance, right? And then they don't get to go on any of these spots, right? Am I incorrect? Do I misread the? That's Eric's. Uh, Eric, that's good. Yeah, we, we could repeal the ordinance. Uh, I guess what a lot of people seem to forget is the, the ATVs are not here because we have an ordinance. We have an ordinance because the ATVs were here. And part of the problem we had before we had the ordinance was uh, the usage and who they were and the tearing up our highways and racing down the roads and those kind of issues. And that was one of the reasons we, uh, we made the ordinance. And I think if you, uh, if you have an ordinance that's, uh, with reasonable restrictions, 95% uh, of the people are gonna follow it. If you have no ordinance, it's probably gonna be a free for all and a lawless land, which uh, is what some of the communities around us have basically taken as a position of no ordinance. And um, I think the ATVs are more problems in those areas. And I've got uh, Diana. Diana? 
in the absence of a municipal ordinance, we revert to um, state statutes. And there are already state statutes around mufflers on ATVs, um, things to do with sound in general, um, mechanical things. And the problem is one of enforcement. You know, it's not that we need the state to tell us things that they haven't already. We need somebody to exist to enforce the things that the state has already determined. If we were to repeal our local ordinance, there's still state rules that apply and there would not be a free for all theoretically if there were some enforcement happening. So it's not a question of what rules exist or need to be put into existence. It's a question of enforcing the ones that we already have. And repealing this ordinance at this time would not create a free for all situation in my opinion, because there are really good valid state statutes that exist. There's just nobody to enforce them. Further, further comments? Yep, uh, I've got Eric. I just figured out Two, two questions. We can tell the Lamoille County Sheriff's to sell one of those patrol cars and get a couple of ATVs, right? Yes, if only we were in a meeting, I could make a motion here, right? But uh, uh, mm -hmm. that might be a way to fix this, right? Uh, if that's the real issue is that there's all these laws and we, the problem is the people who are the scoff laws is we need enforcement maybe, so. Getting a for prohibition. This is Doug speaking out of turn. Yes. <laughs> All right, I've got uh, Linda. So I don't know if any of you look at the other towns in their front porch forum posts, but Morrisville is starting to grapple with this as well um, with Moran Loop and Mud City Loop and where it connects to French Hill. And it might be, you know, what we're talking about, I'm guessing when they want when the ATVs would like to go down Railroad Street, they probably want to connect to French Hill and then to Morrisville. But Morrisville, they're, they're grappling with the whole thing and it's theirs is just starting to bubble up. So it could be interesting to see it. it Johnson may not be an issue when uh, they can't get somewhere else from here. So I don't know how that's gonna all work out. But, uh, and the other thing is do ATVs have, um, uh, they register, but did they have an identifying plate or a license or something so yes. that you know when someone goes by, you can jot down their number when they're flying by you? They have a very small little number plate similar to a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, Doug? Yeah, I, I think that the... ATV is, is really going to be a regional issue. And uh, the connection between towns and stuff will matter. Jan set her hand up. Brian? Who's, who's okay, up? Jan. Uh, you'll have to unmute, Jan. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, like Linda said, I know that. Um, Hyde Park is having a problem. Lowell uh, is having a problem. And, you know, I, I realize that Johnson doesn't have any zoning. So that, um, any zoning laws, and that has come into a uh, part of the conversation that allows um, this to go on. But but I think it's a real problem. And I think that if we can, like it has been stated, if we can combine our efforts with the other towns around us that are, are having issues, it would be benefic beneficial to our town, I think, and the residents that own property and live here. Thank you. Anyone else you have, Brian? I don't think so. I'm not seeing anybody else. Okay. Then um, just my finally was, um, if we have the time and energy, invite any other 
comments concerning town matters not previously discussed. Beth? Hey, Beth? If no one else is going to comment, I just like just would like to say thank you, Doug. And it's really fun to watch you be a little rowdy on your last seated meeting. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and we've got Diana and Eric. Diana? I wanted to give my sincere thank you to Eric and the rest of the people involved with our very strong um, kind of groundbreaking COVID response. Um, as a first responder, I was really aware from the beginning of how things were unfolding, and I was just so proud to see Johnson really set the tone for how a town needed to respond. And I just appreciated our emergency management in our village and town um, greatly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. We've got a gr great crew that's been working together on this. And which Eric did we have? Uh, Eric Hutchins. Okay. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, and I, I want to uh, thank uh, Doug and and Kyle for their service to our town, and and I I, I got a second what Diana said about the COVID response, and I, you know all the hard work that everybody on the on the select board does. I think it's I've been more involved over the last you know year and a half than I had been previously, and it, the amount of things you guys do in service to our town and the you know real commitment to public service is 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 pretty remarkable. So thank you all. And you put up with me asking like way too many questions too, which is pretty, pretty amazing. It's never easy. <laughs> well, we, we did in, in talking with Brian as we were setting up this, uh, these informational uh, meetings, I, uh, I came up with the red scissors and that uh, if somebody got out of control, you know, I just show the red scissors. And, uh, but uh, we didn't need to do that. Okay, any, any other comment? I would just like to, uh, well, first of all, thank you, Eric, for your kind words. But I also would like to note that uh, I think this is a record. I've never seen three Eric's on the same Zoom call before. <laughs> <laughs> An Eric tsunami. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fairly well. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. And uh, thanks again to Kyle and Doug. This will be your last meeting on, uh, well, we don't have a literal table to be on, on one side of, but uh, uh, on the government side of the table. So we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you as participants. I'd like to thank Kyle for all of her exceptional activity and conscience. Oh, no, nope. I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.